Nighttime snow removal is a must. Without nighttime snow plowing, I don't even know if we would have ever gotten out during winter time with without them being able to do that. Mason and her neighbors in the district that includes South Lake Tahoe found out at a community meeting last week there would be snow removal cutbacks. Other municipalities in the basin uh, have been hiring extra help and have been doing better because they have higher wages. And so there is a possibility that we might not be able to provide um, some of the snow removal in our subdivisions because of the fact that we have a lack of employees. The county now warning of possible 48 hour wait times for snow removal, which means delayed response, which means deaths. So it, it really felt like a slap in the face to us because this is this is a health and safety thing. I want you to remember why you made it. The District 5 supervisor that covers this area told us, quote, I am working hard on this situation. It is my highest priority. I am optimistic that we will resolve this issue in a meaningful way. There's also a call out right now in El Dorado County to fill these open positions and hopefully bring that nighttime snow removal back online. This is not over just yet. Yeah, I'm sure it is not. People will certainly want to know more as yeah. this goes on. All right. The snow starts to fall. <laughs> right. Thank you, Madison. It is that time of year with the storms bringing down trees. This is what happened in Modesto today. The owners told us that they were from out of town and parked in the specific spot because they were worried about the busy street, but their car would be hit by with other passing vehicles. And then look at that's what happened. Yeah, can't get away from it, huh? I'll stay with CBS 13 as we head into the stormy season. You can always find a list of chain controls and interactive radar right on our website, cbs13.com, and of course, streaming on CBS News Sacramento. It's been, what, six days since the election, and tonight Josh Harder is claiming victory in California's 9th Congressional District. It covers most of San Joaquin County, including Stockton, as well as parts of Contra Costa County and Sacramento County. Earlier tonight, Harder released a statement saying, in part, tallying up every vote takes time, and with today's results, we are confident we've won. Let's take a look at the current results. Not officially called, but Josh Harder is leading the former mayor of Stockton by a few percentage points. The Associated Press has not yet called the race. As you can see, about 71% of the vote has been counted on in this one. After last week's victory for President-elect Trump, January 6th defendants are now citing his win as a reason to delay their criminal prosecutions. Trump has said he would pardon some of the people there that day. The federal filings complicate the DOJ's ability to wrap up its prosecutions before the inauguration. Attorneys for one defendant said the following. History has shown that President Donald Trump is not shy when it comes to exercising his pardon powers. And there is clearly no reason to believe he won't do as he says. Former president is continuing to fill his cabinet. Just today, he named a handful of people from his Secretary of State nominee to his U.N. ambassador. Well, some of them were part of the last Trump administration and are taking on a new role. For others, this would be their first round. CBS News has learned President-elect Donald Trump is expected to name Florida Senator Marco Rubio as his nominee for Secretary of State. Rubio was elected to the Senate in 2010 and ran against Trump in the 2016 Republican presidential primaries. This election, he was passed over as VP pick, but remained a loyalist on the campaign trail. The only way to make America wealthy and safe and strong again is to make Donald J. Trump our president again. Trump picked Tom Homan to be his so-called border czar. The position does not require Senate confirmation, which would allow Homan to start deporting undocumented immigrants on day one of Trump's administration. Homan has confirmed the U.S. military will play a role. We'll know who we're going to arrest, where we're most likely to find them based on numerous inv you know, investigative processes. Holman is Trump's former acting director of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement and was the architect of Trump's first policy that resulted in undocumented immigrants being separated from family members who were citizens. CBS News has also confirmed Stephen Miller, a vocal advocate for stricter immigration laws in Trump's first term, will be deputy chief of staff for domestic policy. Trump is also expected to name U.S. Representative Mike Waltz from Florida 
as national security advisor. And New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik has been tapped to represent the U.S. at the United Nations, an institution she's criticized. We know that the U.N. is a den of anti-Semitism. Late Monday, the president-elect chose former New York Congressman Lee Zeldin to run the Environmental Protection Agency. Zeldin vowed to surge domestic energy production and roll back Biden regulations. Let's take you out to the Sacramento airport tonight, where an Atlanta-bound flight is back in the sky after being delayed because it hit a catering truck. Check it out. This is the Delta flight. More than 180 people were on board. Uh, but they're all okay, thankfully. Delta says the right wing made contact with the truck, and the plane went right back to the gate. The vendor reported minor scratches to that truck. I'm so f sorry, guys.